An entitled woman at the grocery store demands that I do her shopping for her. She hands me a little rolled up grocery list on a piece of paper and tells me to go fetch while she sits down. Then when I refuse, she goes absolutely berserk to the point that when the police are there, they have to pick her up and slam her. And that's just the start. There is an entire ripple effect that happens because of this moment that leads to an unexpected outcome to this whole situation. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell to turn on notifications. I had reported to work on this particular Monday where I am the site supervisor for an armed security account only to discover that the blasted ingots that worked the night shift had not only left me an empty coffee pot, which is a mortal sin, but had entirely cleaned me out of coffee, leaving me not but an empty container devoid of my much needed morning caffeine. The inconsiderate so-and-sos. Grumbling, I go off to the local market to buy some caffeinated goodness so to keep my heart beating through my busy day. Mind you, I am in uniform, which means black pants, dress shirt with my badge, and various security emblems. My duty belt with a firearm, baton, handcuffs, etc., etc. For the sake of those squeamish folk out there that go all white in the face when they see an open carry, I have also donned a windbreaker with security written on the back of it in six inch high day glow yellow letters. In other words, I looked nothing like any of the folk who worked at this market, whose uniform consisted of a a green apron. Now, mind you, I probably could have handled this better, but I was grumpy. It was a Monday morning without coffee after all. So I'm just standing there inside the door of the market, reading the chalkboard where they have written their menu for the small cafe they run when this entitled wench on her cell phone walks up to me and tries to hand me a slip of paper. Okay, I'm a bit confused, but I take it and I give it a look. But as soon as I do, the entitled woman makes a little shooing motion and walks away and sits down at a bench by the door. She never says a word to me, doesn't really even look at me, barely acknowledges my existence and just walks off. So I'm kind of annoyed, you might say. I look at this piece of paper and it's a list of, you guessed it, groceries. Um, WTH? So I wander over and I politely inquire as to what this is exactly and why had she seen it fit to hand it to me. That's my grocery list, of course. Fetch them for me now. I'm in a hurry and I can't be bothered. I'm on a very important phone call. Again, with the shoeing motion. Now, I've been going to this market for almost five years, and I can assure you, they don't fetch your groceries for you. So after some consideration, I very carefully rolled her list into a tight little ball, and I dropped it on her lap, and loudly growled at her to get off her lazy butt and go do her own shopping. Then I turned around and walked off. I hear screeching out from behind me, but I just ignore her and I keep walking. Now at this point, I am seriously thinking that the entitled woman will take the hint, see the day glow letters on my jacket and buy a clue. But oh no, the entitled woman is just not that smart. She instead chases me down and starts yelling about how she's going to get me fired and how I need to fetch her damn groceries right now. Trying to remain calm, I politely but forcefully tell her again, very clearly, I don't work here. Do your own damn shopping, lady. And then I leave. I thought that was the end of it. So off I go to get a cup of wonderful hot coffee at the cafe and then move on to the Isle of Heaven, where I am busily perusing their fine selection of lovely roasted goodness when who should appear but the entitled woman with a gentleman in tow. She is loudly berating him about his lazy workers and demanding that I be fired on the spot. This poor gentleman looks confusedly at me and then at her and then informs her, he doesn't work here, ma'am. We don't employ security, ma'am. Being a bit of a jerk, I wave at her and I give her a big smile and I agree with him. The entitled woman woman absolutely loses it. She goes completely insane. She starts screaming that I need to fetch her damn groceries right now or she's going to get all of us fired. And she is an important person and how we will regret treating her this way and blah, 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 blah. The gentleman finally gets a word in edgewise and again informs her that I do not work here and I don't have to do anything for her. That's when I see a dim little light bulb go off on her head and I can see a glimmer, tiny, but there, of understanding beginning to dawn in her eyes. The light is dim, however, quickly squashed by her overinflated sense of entitlement as she promptly replies in the snottiest voice possible. I kid you not, with Well, he obviously is a menial of some sort. Make him! To say this got me a tad riled up is perhaps an understatement. I shoved a one-finger salute into her face and told her emphatically to go screw herself. The gentleman quickly got between us and loudly told her in no uncertain terms that, once again, I did not 
not work there. And two, that she needed to get the hell out of his store right now. The entitled woman literally screamed at the top of her lungs. No words, just screaming, just rage, and started demanding to see someone in charge so she could get us all fired and someone better get her her damn groceries and how she was going to sue us all. Didn't we know how important she was? The gentleman, who I had naturally assumed was the manager, promptly got right back in her face and yelled over her that he was the owner. His family had owned the place for 20 years and they had never, in all that time, done someone shopping for them ever. He then grabbed her by the arm and literally dragged her off towards the front of the store. At that point, I was just shaking my head in disbelief, but I just went ahead, made my selection of fine coffees, and wandered over to stand in line to pay for it. As I'm there at the register, the owner came up to me and actually apologized for the entitled woman's behavior, and we shared a what the heck moment. We actually just ended up laughing about how stupid she was, or crazy, either way. He even tried to let me have the coffee for free, but I thanked him and I told him it wasn't his fault that the entitled woman was a nut, and I was fine paying for it. Now, you would think that was the end of it. I mean, it was crazy, but weird stuff happens and people are idiots, whatever. But oh no. Dear audience, it would appear that we both had underestimated the depths of the entitled woman's craziness because as we walked through the door to the outside world, who, to our astonishment, was there waiting for us? The entitled woman, it turns out, actually called the police on us and the dum-dum was out there screaming at the officer demanding that we be arrested for not serving her and how she wanted us both fired and she was going to sue and that someone had better get her her groceries right now, damn it. My jaw dropped. I don't mind saying it. I was beyond shocked. I honestly started laughing at this point. This lady was certifiably nuts. Because of my job, we happened to work closely with the local police department, so I actually recognized the officer that had responded to the call and gave Officer Betsy a wave when she looked at me. She gave me a grin and walked over asking me about exactly what was going on. We both gave our side of the story and the owner asked that she be removed from the property. Please as she was at this point causing a scene. Betsy just rolled her eyes, walked over, and told the entitled woman that she needed to leave right now, immediately, or she would be charged with trespassing. Now, you ever have that moment when you can see something bad start to happen, but your mind just can't quite believe it's actually occurring? Well, I saw it start clear as day as the entitled woman reared back and started to go off again. And yup, there it was. She actually jammed her finger into Officer Betsy's story sternum, not once, but twice. Might have been a third time, but Officer Betsy had at that point picked her up, flipped her over, and dropped the entitled woman on her head. She landed on top of her, had her handcuffed in record time, got back up, opened her door, slid the entitled woman in the back of her patrol car, and slammed the door on her. And we all just stood there, shaking our heads in total disbelief as the entitled woman started to scream and thrash and kick at the windows of the squad car. She was still doing it as Officer Betsy drove off to the station too. I saw Officer Betsy later on that day and she told me that the entitled woman was still throwing a fit when they got to the station and fought the officers there like hell until they ended up stuffing her into a control chair. She was later transported to the hospital for a psych evaluation. No idea what happened to her after that. Well, that is of course until the update. Jumping into the future. So a lot of you have been asking me about what happened to the lovely entitled woman in my tale and want more information and quite honestly, your requests pique my curiosity as well. So I decided to do some checking, call some people, and do some digging. A few things to keep in mind about what I found out and what happened afterwards. First thing is that to me, this was simply a random encounter with a crazy woman in a store that I was at. It had nothing to do with me or my job. It didn't happen on my site, so there was really no reason for me to look into it any further. When Officer Betsy drove off, it was, as far as I was concerned, over and done with. An amusing, if annoying, story to tell my friends and family about, but nothing more. Second thing, no one informed me that anything ever happened to anyone else over this whole deal. I was either deliberately kept out of the loop or my testimony wasn't needed about the events of that day concerning her arrest. I wasn't involved. I was a bystander. I'll explain this in a little bit, but I had no idea what was going on after this. Third thing, this all happened almost a year and a half ago and a lot has changed since then. People have moved on or even passed away in the case of my boss, Andy, the owner of the company that I worked for, and I no longer work there. So some of these folks were a bit hard to track down and some of this is even second or third hand account of the event.
events that followed this. Okay, so with all of that being said, here is the fallout from the entitled woman's little meltdown. She was put on a 72 hour psych hold, but even worse, while she was in the psych unit, and no, I have no idea how she managed it, she almost unalived herself. From what I heard, it was a close call, but they resuscitated her and she got shipped off to a more secure mental health facility after her attempt. She spent two weeks there and ended up having to do mandatory weekly visits to a psychologist for a year because of a court order. And now I kind of feel bad for her because no one should have to go through that kind of thing or be that bad off as to think those dark thoughts was an answer to their problems. But, and this is a huge but, it turns out that her jerk of a husband knew about her problems and deliberately kept her from getting the help she needed because it might hurt his career. Yes, you heard that right. This piece of doo-doo knew she was psychotic. This kind of outburst had apparently happened before, and he was more worried about his job than his wife's mental health. So boo to him. So on to the loving husband of the entitled woman. It turns out he was an attorney working for the city council, not in criminal law, but in civil law. He's pretty high up on the food chain at the city attorney's office, though. As soon as he was contacted that she was in custody, he showed up at the jail demanding she be released immediately into his custody, that all charges be dropped, and that the entire incident made to go away, or his very important friends on the city council would be getting involved and heads would roll. Sounds eerily familiar, doesn't it? They did apparently let him in to see her, but otherwise told him to pound sand. So when that didn't work, he went to the chief of police and demanded the same thing, except he upped the ante. He wanted Officer Betsy fired. And me and the store owner are arrested. She for excessive use of force because of the bruise on her forehead and me and the owner because we had both injured her while she was in the store. The chief told him to pound sand about releasing her as that was up to the DA at that point, not him. But there was an investigation carried out about the incident by IAD. I wasn't contacted or informed because when IAD went to the store, the owner, his name was Greg, handed them the security tapes that had captured the whole thing from start to finish, including officer Betsy arresting her. I AD watched them, said this is nonsense, and told the husband to pound sand. This I got from now Sergeant Betsy. Congrats on the promotion. Of course, this wasn't good enough for the husband. Over the course of the next eight months or so, the store got inspected six times by the city health department, four times by the city fire marshal, and had their taxes audited by the state. All entirely innocent. Nothing to do with this incident. Of course, the husband wasn't involved. So the owner of the store was assured by the city council member that he complained to about this harassment. It finally ended when the husband was named in the suit filed against the city by my company. This gets even crazier. So here's what happened. My boss, Andy, the owner of our company, got a phone call from the husband demanding that I immediately be fired or bad things would happen to the company. This I got firsthand from our office manager, Misty, as he had talked to her first and made much the same threats to her. Misty decided to record the conversation at that point. And so the entire conversation conversation the husband had with Andy was captured on tape and Misty stayed on the line as a further witness to the conversation that the husband had with Andy, the owner of our company. It's not the first time my company has been threatened with legal action, so that part was SOP on her part, standard operating procedure. She also contacted our lawyers as soon as, I'm gonna sell, left the husband's lips. One thing you should know about Andy was that he was a retired state police officer. He doesn't take being threatened very well, and he lit into this turd with both barrels. Misty said the nicest thing he said to the husband was F you. She actually dug up the recording for me. We listened to it over a few drinks, and it was great. Then the husband tried to torpedo our company as well, except he ran into a few problems. Number one, we were not located in that city, and we had just one contact there, mine. And there was no way the city council could get our contract pulled at that site, although they did try because the management company that ran the complex at that time was both very pleased with our performance and because the property itself was owned by a huge real estate company that does business all over the country and wasn't even based in the state. And if there was some complaint filed with them, no one I talked to had heard of it. Number two, security companies like mine are licensed through the state, not the city. And guess who does the licensing? 
licensing the state police. In particular, the licensing department is run by Andy's best friend and longtime partner. Strange, isn't it? LOL. So when this jerk had someone from the city council try calling to get our business license revoked, he was given a very emphatic piss off. Did I mention that all phone calls to the state police are recorded? And guess who had a few drinks that night with Andy and just happened to let slip this little nugget of information, which was also passed on to our lawyers, who ended up subpoenaing the state police about it and was disclosed in the court case. This ended up being quietly settled out of civil court with a nice bonus to Andy's retirement account after almost a year of being quiet. Misty had no idea how much money it was, but Andy was grinning like a fool for three days straight after he got the check. It's a shame he didn't live to enjoy it. But after that, there was an anonymous tip left to the state police investigation division, totally different department than licensing that the officers at my site, me in particular, were involved with the local gang dealing drugs and all sorts of other illicit activity, etc. So we had an undercover officer from the state police work my site for three months as an officer there. Again, I was totally in the dark about this for obvious reasons, and while Andy knew about it, he also knew that it was nonsense. So he actively helped to put the undercover into play to prove us innocent. Nothing came of it and all I knew was that I had a new guy I had to show the ropes to and he turned out to be a hell of a good worker. He even helped us bust the guy behind the cat house operation that one of the maintenance workers was running out of empty apartments, employing ladies of the night. We had known it was going on, sort of, rumors and such, but not who or where, you know? There is a happy ending to this as the dear husband was retired from the city attorney's office while the ink was still drying on the settlement agreement my company got with the city. As for the entitled woman, she got better, thank goodness. The misdemeanor assault charges that were filed against her for poking Betsy and the three other officers at the jail that she went to as they tried to book her were all dropped as she got the court-mandated psych help she really needed. Apparently, she had divorced the husband for the long-term psychological torment that she suffered at his hands and took him for every dime he had, all the way down to his shorts. She did end up apologizing to the owner of the store, Greg, but not to me. But by the time all of that took place, I wasn't working at that company anymore. I was happily retired and she couldn't find me. She also talked to Sergeant Betsy about the ordeal and that's where I found out about a lot of this after I contacted Betsy. I could not believe the can of worms this random encounter opened up and how much I completely missed about the aftermath. On the plus side, this gave me a chance to see some old friends I've missed and I even got a job offer out of it. Something a whole lot less strenuous than the complex from hell that I worked at back then. So was I the jerk for how I handled this? Yeah, so apparently poking a police officer like that with your fingers can be considered assaulting a police officer. I think touching them in general might be considered assaulting a police officer. But the one thing that not enough people seem to be pointing out is that the police officer picked her up and slammed her on her head. And then they say that she was in serious need of immediate medical attention for her mental health. Even if she was already a certain way before, getting slammed like that probably doesn't help the situation at all. I'm guessing the officer felt like she had no other options since she was just going totally wild. That part of the story sounds like it's straight out of pro wrestling. Officer Betsy at that point had picked her up, flipped her over, dropped the entitled woman on her head, landed on top of her, handcuffed her, got her up, opened the door, slid her in the patrol car, and slammed it on her. The way that that's described sounds so extreme. So many of these situations seem to originally start when somebody thinks that somebody else works at a place that they do not work at. This guy did not work for this store, but no matter how many times they told her that, she didn't want to hear it. For some reason, that concept seems so unbelievable to people in these situations. When you keep telling them over and over again, I truly do not work here. Seriously, I don't work here. But then they keep screaming that they're going to get you fired. The original poster actually ended up having some empathy for this woman because once he hears about her having to be in the psych ward, he can understand how terrible of a situation that is. But I I mean, what do you really do in a situation like that when you're trying to help the person by telling them the facts, the reality that you don't work there and then they just keep going and going and going? There's not really anything you can do sometimes. This is more like one of those circumstances where life just happened to the OP, the original poster. Not necessarily something that he was antagonizing or trying to bring out. I mean, he even left and then when he went outside, she was out there waiting for him. But the last thing I'll say on this one is what a ripple effect. This one single event cascaded down into all these different different outcomes happening. A lot of the times we don't get to see what happens as a result of a certain thing going down, but in this case, we saw a lot of it. So if you were in this situation,
question, let me know how you would handle it down below. And also, jerk or not a jerk and why. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories in this series, use the playlist at the top of the description. And next time you live stream, use the cream of the crop music. Search for cream of the stream on Spotify or whatever music platform you use for copyright free music to use for your stream. It's free. Cream of the stream. Either way, thanks a lot for listening. I'll see you guys next time.